Well, good morning, everybody. My name is Paul Ricard, and I'm a plein air artist, and it's great to be with you today. I'm out at Trinidad, California on the beach. Well, as you can see, this is a beautiful place. The, the ocean, the atmosphere, it's perfect for painting. But you don't have to be at a place like this. You could be in your backyard, or you could be in a classroom, or anywhere to make a painting. And one rule about painting is it's okay to mess up. And there's nothing like atmospheric watercolors that it's okay to mess up because there's so many happy accidents that happen. So I'm gonna go over a lot of different things uh, with painting. I'll talk about composition. I'll talk about value, which is from light to dark. I'll talk about color and color harmony. And then I'll get into the three-stage process of watercolor painting. And I just wanna invite you to take it in and then make of it what you will and just enjoy painting. Well, I'm back on the landscape again, and this is my setup. I, I have two sheets of paper clipped to a board. I've got a simple um, camp chair, and then I've got my brushes and paints. And really, you don't need a lot of materials to, to paint. You just need a few brushes and a red, blue, and yellow pigment. Those are the primaries and you can mix anything. So I'll be using a lot of different colors, but the reality of it is if you're in a classroom or you know, you're at home, you only need three colors and in mixing them, you can get all these wonderful variety of, uh, of hues. And, and so just stick with, uh, with a simple palette. Well, I'm looking at the, at the landscape and, and I'm always looking at opportunity and I see a, a beautiful backdrop of Trinidad head, uh, the ocean just coming right into the rock and spraying up. It's a perfect uh, opportunity for landscape paintings. So I'm going to sketch it and I'm going to try to think about what it is that I'm going to emphasize and I'm going to emphasize Trinidad head and that, that beautiful horizon line that fades right down to the sky. This is gonna be a small value study, by the way, and it's just a light, light and dark painting. And then this one here will be the large color painting. So I thought it'd be interesting for you to see the light and the dark with, with just black and white, and then a full color painting here. So it's just a matter of, of sketching in drawing everything in relation to each other. Um, I like to, to pick a rock in the foreground uh, to give some interest close up. And then I just love the, the far distance where the sky and the horizon just verge into nothingness. So I'm just sketching here in some of the things that I think could be interesting for the painting. And there's a basic sketch of the painting. And it's okay to take things out or, or maybe add some things. Sometimes if a rock's right in the middle, I was thinking about putting that rock in, in there, but I think, ah, no, it doesn't need to be in there. It'll just uh, kind of get in the way and clog up the painting. So right into the painting, here we go. And this is what's called Payne's Gray. Payne's Gray is just a, uh, kind of a neutral tint and it's got kind of a bluish sort of look to it, a bluish purple dark. When you're painting, I think it's like sculpting in a way. And just like you wouldn't carve a face into a wooden block to start off with, you you start to shape it. And it's the same way with atmospheric watercolor painting. So what I'm doing is I'm putting in the sky, but I want continuity to my painting, so I'm gonna drop it down right into the whole painting. I'm gonna bring the sky into the rock. Every part of the painting will merge into the other part. Now with watercolors, we're working from light to dark. And so I'm always looking for those areas that I wanna keep the white of the paper because that that will be the light area. And where the surf hits Trinidad head, I'll keep that light. 
There, just merging it, merging it, merging it. And as I'm looking at the painting, I'll just put a, a few little more darks here and there. There we go. And look at the ocean, how it's just uh, that wonderful surf of October in Humboldt County, where sometimes it can be just nice and soft and, and uh, uh, as quiet as glass. And then other times it comes up, as you know, and it, and it can just roar. So there's the sand and the surf. I'm not too worried about following the lines of the paper or, or the lines of the drawing. I'm just letting it merge together. So that's what's called the stage one of atmospheric watercolor painting. That's the first wash. It's a unifying wash. And now, as that dries, I'm going to do the color version of it. All right, now for the color version. This one's drying. And so I'm going to show you how to do wet into wet painting. So I've got a big flat brush. It almost looks like something you use for a house. And I'm going to wet with clear water. I'm not going to slobber the water on, but I'm going to put enough in to make it wet. And just like I did this, this first value painting, I'm not going to worry about the lines again because I want the painting to merge in, the, in my sculpting process. I see gray, so I'm going to use some blue and its complementary color orange and I'm going to drop that into the painting. So this is the part I love. Watch what happens. Big brush. And let the watercolor do the painting. Let it just drop in there. Oh, have some fun. Here we go. And it's just like the one up above. Oh, and this is an important thing too. Just get, get a towel and sometimes you can use that to clean up your painting or you can use it for different effects too. All right, so looking at the sky, I'm seeing a little bit of light. I see just, mm, just ever so little bit of light coming, filtering through. The sun's trying to come out, but I think it's one of those days in Humboldt County where we're gonna be missing out on, on on the sun. And I see a little bit of blue, though, just a, a hint of it at the, at the horizon. So I'm going to drop some in. Oh, that's one of those happy accidents. A little too much blue. There we go. But it's okay to mess up. You don't want to worry about that. Let, let the watercolor do the painting. All right, coming down through the painting, I'm just looking at all the the lights and darks, what we call value. And I'm going to mix a little blue and brown and get kind of a shade of gray. I heard it once said that if you want a colorful painting, you should use a lot of gray because then when you drop in the color, it just pops. A big brush really helps you let the watercolor do the painting. And so you'll hear me say that a lot. And I'm seeing the color and the lights and darks, but I'm not worried about that too much. This is not the finished painting. This is only stage one. There we go. I see a little bit of orange. I want to keep my light though, just a little bit. There we go. Seeing a little shade of red. Let's see. Oh, we'll make it a little more brownish red and put it in there. Yeah, there we go. All right, the beach color. Kind of interesting. Let's uh, think about that. It's kind of a light beige. I'll mix it. Sometimes I use a, a little bit of white gouache in my paintings. If I want to lighten up something, but also have some pigment in it. Let's see, so I'm gonna come along here and I'm just painting over the rocks. 
Uh, I'm going to go back to my value study. And again, and that's just light and dark. And I'm going to be looking at the different parts of the painting that I might want to add some pigment to. Well, first off, Trinidad Head needs some darkness in there. So I'm going to put some dark in there. Light and dark is so important in painting. It's that interplay of light that, that makes a painting. It's playing the light and dark off of the subject matter that you're painting. And I feel pretty good about the distance. There's a term in plein air painting called recession of values. Things far back will be muted, things close up darker with a lot of detail. So I'm just putting in a little detail here of the rock. I'll wash over that later. Now the green will be at the top here. This is the green color and you'll see that when I do the color but it's a little lighter than the than the darker areas. So I'm reflecting that. There we go. And then there's a rock out there and it's a little bit darker than the, than the surf. So I'm gonna to try to reflect that too. So here we go. Put a little bit here. This rock is a little bit further away than the head so it will be muted a little bit. And there's some light areas, but clearly it's a little more gray. All right, now I'm going to go to the beach for my value study. And, hmm, the beach is really about the same value as the rock. And I can always dab a little bit. While it's wet, you can take your rag and dab a little bit off. Oh, that's too dark, way too dark. There we go. It's kind of about the, the light dark of the, of the beach. You can do this with a pencil, by the way, too. You don't need to have a, a fancy uh, palette or anything like that. You can just do something like this with a pencil. So that's stage two for the value study. I'm trying to get the relationships of the darks and lights. And I'll come back in here in a little bit to put in the ocean. Okay, back now to our painting in color, and I'm just testing it. It's pretty well dry, so I'm going to go ahead and mix some color. Overall, Trinidad Head is, has a dark feel about it. It's got a moody sort of a feel, and the trees are, are showing a little bit of the effects of the wind. So I'm going to kind of twist them up a little bit. It's up to the artist to use creative license to, to kind of suggest the feel. But I see different uh, shades of uh, yellow and uh, and color in there in the head. So th this is the fun part in watercolors. You can drop it in. And this is that wet into wet. I'm just putting wet into wet colors in there. I'm testing it. And I can always change it the way that I want. I can make it darker or lighter. I can do whatever I feel like I want to do. So as I'm going down, I'm, I'm blending, just having a, a good time with that. I think probably making some mistakes as I go. I'm 
always thinking about my lights. I want to preserve my lights. And there's the rock that's kind of emerging. There we go. This is just a $5 Chinese calligraphy brush, and you can get these most anywhere. They're, they're really nice, and you don't need fancy brushes. Now, Trinidad Head has kind of a dark presence about it in, in the front as it hits the surf, so I'm going to darken up a little bit. And it's got kind of a reddish kind of feel about it too, I think. I see red in that, so I'm going to put that in, but that's way too red. So I'll darken it a little bit. See, you can mess up when you do watercolor painting. It doesn't have to be perfect. And as you go, you can make changes and things. So I think I'll leave that the way it is for right now, but I'll go over to the rock. And this is the same rock on this side, but it's got a little bit of color to it. So I'll add a little color here. Still a little wet, but that's not the end of the world. It's kind of going off my lines, but you know what? I'm not worried about that. But it might be a little bit too wet to paint. All right, let's go back up to our value study and let's put in a few more darks and lights. Okay, let's look at Trinidad Head. Base of the rock. So I'm using a small brush here for the surf, and I'm just looking at the, at the possibility of, of the spray coming up. So I want to try to do more, a little bit more delicate work. But I would say that if you use bigger brushes, that you'll have better success. But there is a place for some fine work in a watercolor painting. A little too dark. I'm thinking of the value of the, of the water. It's definitely lighter than the rock, so I want to keep that, the surf at a lighter value. Keep it light. And the horizon line merges right into the sky. You can just barely see it. 